Okay, hi everyone, and uh, welcome to Space of Toulouse. I'm uh, Issa Chenard, Thomas Pesquet. I'm in space for six months. Uh, well, I've been there for a month only, but I'll be there until the end of May next year for the, the Proxima mission. Um, and today, I have some questions to answer for you guys. I hope you, you're having a fun event and very productive. Uh, so I'm just gonna pull the questions and, and go one by one. Very good questions. Uh, some of them a little bit less good, but we'll come to that later. Um, so the first one, question mark from Peter, what's, what's my most preferred activity on board the ISS, apart from just watching the Earth and stars? Um, well, watching the Earth and stars is one, that's for sure, and taking pictures, because it's so beautiful. Uh, but when I'm not doing this, I think just floating. Floating is just unbelievable. It, it gives you so much freedom. You can spend your entire day just drifting down the modules and uh, just relaxing. It's, it's probably the best way you can, you can relax. Uh, I was gonna say on Earth, but no, unfortunately, in the world, let's say, in the world. Question two from Kashsa. Uh, which of the, about which one of the 50 experiments you're performing do you think is the most interesting? Um, so I think they're all interesting because I've, I've tried to have the experiments focus on applications, uh, not only theory, but also real spin-offs in society, um, because I think that's what we're here for. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't performed most of them by far, because I'm one month into the mission. But uh, one experiment I've had a lot of fun with is uh, Maris here, that big torture chair uh, right behind me that I've had to deploy a couple times. And this one gives us really good insight into how muscle works and um, is gonna help us understand uh, muscle loss and muscle pathology on the, on the earth. I've, um, I've played with um, new materials, new surfaces, self-cleaning surfaces, uh, I've had the opportunity to test um, new, a new way to, to uh, assess water cleanliness and to clean up water. Um, all of this can be applied to um, either to developing countries, to our countries. So I think it's really great that we have such a good program, thanks to CNES, CADMOS, uh, MEDES, and, and ESA. Uh, question three from Andreas. Have you seen deforestation from space? Yeah, I've seen deforestation from space, unfortunately. Um, you see, especially in, the, in South America, you see the forest lush and green, and suddenly you get big squares cutting into it, and, and this you can clearly see from space. Uh, but it's, it's not the only uh, bad effect of, of uh, human activities on the Earth that you can see on the, on the environment that you can see from space. You can see over time, of course, not only six months, but you can see the ice melting, you can see the mouth of, of rivers going into the sea being so dirty. It's, it's completely brown water uh, going into the sea. You can see, you can see things like this. So um, it's not always nice, and, and I think it, it reinforces my conviction that we have to protect our planet and try to make it a better place as, as much as we can. Um, question four from Louis. Louise. <laughs> which solar system planet do you prefer and which one would you prefer to explore? Uh, so one way to answer that is, is to say the Earth, because um, of course it's kind of my favorite planet because we live on it. Um, and I'd like to explore the Earth a little bit more than I've had the, the chance to do in my, um, in my life so far. But, um, but another way to answer this question is to say Mars, of course, because that's what everybody says, but they say that for a reason, because it's close, because it's similar to Earth, because we, we could learn a lot by going to Mars about um, life, life on Earth, how does it appear, why does it disappear, what's happening there, uh, where do we come from. Uh, so I think it's a really, really good target for science and exploration. Everybody agrees on that, all the agencies agree, and now it's just a matter of um, pulling in the same direction all together. And I think that's what we see um, happening more and more, so I'm happy about it that maybe one day there'll be a European astronaut on a, on a mission to Mars. Question five, as the administrations are changing, space programs of various nations subject to change, and especially human space exploration program, how do you think international collaboration and especially the diverging view on human space exploration between ESA and other space agencies will evolve in the next year with this change of administrators? Um, it's a good question. We've, we have a, sometimes a very political program in a very political environment, uh, and that's okay. That's, it's the same can be said for so many other activities. Um, and if you want to achieve something big, you'll have to deal with those questions at some point in time. I don't think much is going to change um, because 
I don't want to be to sound arrogant, but I think what we do here is, is bigger than, than just one single administration. Um, a program like the ISS, it took dozens of years to develop, uh, to create, to launch, to operate. So it's not just one five-year administration that's going to that's going to jeopardize everything that we've done so far i think and now the good the good side of international cooperation is that we're bound by by treaties and you cannot just you know get up one morning and be in a bad mood and cancel the whole thing that's not that's not the way it works so um i think we'll we'll see the cooperation going strong for for many many years and um and anyway if we if we want to go somewhere we've never been like mars or, or some other destinations there's no there's no single nation that can achieve that uh, in the world today, not the U.S., not anybody. So we need international cooperation, and, uh, and that's why ESA is a card to play, because I think ESA is an international organization. Even within ESA, we had to, to solve all those differences that you always have when you, when you put people of different nations together. So we're experts at, at solving that kind of problems. So, um, so that's in our, in our DNA. So I, I think we'll, we'll keep on doing what we do and we have some pretty good ideas to bring to the table. Um, question six from Mohammed. Do you think ISIS astronauts are still explorers like the first astronauts? Or are they now just, just amazing scientific experiment operator who happen to work in a lab in outer space? How do I see myself? Well, it's a good question. Um, it, it's true that on a daily basis, if you, if you stop looking through the window, um, you're in the lab, so you're fixing things, uh, you're maintaining that environment, and you're operating science experiments. Um, but I think that's just, that's a little bit short of the truth, uh, because, because first of all, you need to sit on the rocket to get there. Um, and, and that makes it that makes it special, and it's the same for people going to the Arctic or the Antarctic or some some crazy places. They're scientists, yes, but they're also explorers. Um, and I think now science and exploration go together. You you just don't go somewhere to plant a flag. We've done that in the past. We don't do this anymore. We we go somewhere because it's useful because we're gonna learn stuff. Uh, that's the way the, the world goes, and that's that's the way you know the world gets better. I think. So, um, so yeah, we're doing science every day. That's that's our that's our daily activities. Uh, but I think by doing this and by putting our lives in the in the balance, because it's risky to to come here and to work here, um, we we're preparing the next steps of human exploration, and uh, and and we're kind of fostering this this process, uh, this ongoing process of exploration. So I, I consider myself. Uh, an explorer, maybe not as much as some other people, but it, but it doesn't matter. It has to be there somewhere in the back of my head, somewhere in the back of the agency, the agency's heads, uh, that we're not only doing science, we're also doing exploration, and we'll continue to do so, and we go to some other places in the future. Um, question seven from Florian. According to you, which innovation discovered in space is now the most important on Earth? Classic question. Um, so. Again, so so much can be said on that on that uh, on that topic. Um, there's everything we do in space, but let's say let's focus more specifically on human spaceflight because everybody knows what space brings to society um, in terms of communication, weather, uh, navigation, uh, all the rest of it. So if you look at human spaceflight, there's really two two big ways that we contribute to society. Um, there's a very direct way and an indirect way. The, the indirect way is, um, is to get there, we had to develop technology to maintain the space station, we have to develop technology, and this technology um, then stems into, the, into society and is used everywhere, in aerospace, in cars, um, in home appliances, and, there, and there's a huge, humongous list of, of applications that, that come from space in one way or another. Um, but then if we focus even more on, on um, and I think when we get there, there's already plenty of good stuff, but if we focus even more on the research we do on board the ISS, because that's, that's kind of how I understand the question, um, but then there's, there's again a plethora of, of results. We've, we've studied medicine quite a bit, so there are vaccines against M, uh, MSRA, MRSA, uh, that, have, that have been developed thanks to um, research on the ISS. Uh, we study all the aging processes, cardiovascular, uh, neurological, um, bone loss, muscle loss, 
things like this. Um, so in medicine, lots, lots of advances have been made uh, thanks to the research we do here on the ISS. We study cell biology, uh, we, we study the immune system as well. The immune system is a, is a big deal right now in lots of studies. We're doing stem cell research, DNA replication right now, so it's, it's really crazy what's going on about medicine. Uh, we study protein crystal growth, and, as, and we can only do this here on the ISS because on, on Earth that would be impossible. Um, we study combustion processes, uh, we study nanomaterials. Uh, there's new metal alloys that have been created, titanium, aluminum, I think, that are used in, um, in um, propeller blades in, uh, in jet engines. Rolls-Royce has a patent for producing millions of them that stem from, from uh, ISS research. Uh, robotics is also a big one. We've, we've developed robotics technology, and now it's used for robotic surgery on Earth inside an MRI machine, because only a robot could do, could do surgery inside an MRI machine. Um, so there's, there's really a lot of, um, of good spin-off that come from ISS research. And again, we've been building the station for 10 years and operating the station full speed uh, only for maybe three or four years right now. So I expect many, many more um, good outcomes in the, in the future. Question eight from Delia. What did you think when you saw the Earth from the ISS for the first time? Well, I saw, that's pretty high. Because <laughs> we, uh, we launched at night from Baikonur in Kazakhstan. And um, so we didn't see anything really. You're under the fairing, looking at your instruments, and then inserting into orbit, it's completely dark. And then suddenly, uh, the sun rises, and in space, the sun always rises in front of you because you're flying towards the, towards the sunset. And then suddenly I saw whoop, the, the curvature of the Earth, and then, and then little by little the, the clouds, the sea, and I saw, wow, that's pretty high. And I was also pretty magical to, to fly the first few minutes in complete obscurity, and then suddenly, boom, the, somebody turns the light on, and you realize where you are. That's pretty amazing. I wish I could do that again. Um, question nine from Camille. First of all, thank you for your availability. As a student at Isai Superiro, and as a writer of your student, the student's paper, La Lumette, in the last box, I found old pages that, that I wrote. Um, she wants to know how much I'm ready to pay to keep this high intellectual document <laughs> secret from the ISA. Um, yes, that's true. You're not the first one to uh, remind me of those, those troubled times in my past. Um, when, I was, when I was trying to be funny. Um, okay, I don't know what to say. Uh, you guys have all been uh, through those, these years. I'll, I'll give you a lot of money, but uh, unfortunately, I think, I think those pages are already out there somewhere on the, on the internet. And uh, if I'm correct, a friend of mine even sent me one of these pages as a Christmas present on the, um, on the space station to remind me that I could be blackmailed at any time. So, um, yeah, so Camille, I'll, I'll, we'll talk and uh, we'll find an arrangement, no problem. Question 10 from Eduardo. What was, for me, the hardest part in the astronaut training after selection? Uh, there's plenty of uh, good things, plenty of hard things in the astronaut training as well. Um, one of the hardest ones, I think, was learning Russian. Not an easy language, beautiful language, but really difficult. Um, something I also found quite hard is to do everything at the same time. In the same day, you'll have to do um, Russian training, physical training, training in the sim, learning a complex scientific experiment. But as I'm saying this, I realize that's probably what you guys are doing every day. <laughs> at least when you're a student, uh, that's what you're expected to do. But as you get older, it becomes more difficult, okay? So give me a break. Um, so that's, that's what it is learning Russian and, um, and doing everything at the same time. And then what, what seems to be hard at the time, like survival training, things like this, um, it is hard, but you forget the hard part and you keep only the good memories. So when I think back to, to survival training, I have lots of good images that come back and I, I forgot how miserable uh, and cold we were and, and hungry and things like this. Um, question 11 from Maria. Could you imagine your next mission taking place aboard the Chinese space station. Are you looking forward to the opportunity? Yes, I could, um, I could imagine, I can imagine we have a cooperation with our Chinese colleagues and friends. Uh, I hope it continues. I've been learning Chinese for, uh, for a few years, uh, even though recently I haven't had so many opportunities to practice. Um, but yes, I'm looking forward to the opportunity. 
like I said before, um, human spaceflight is an international endeavor. You can only do what we do if several countries put their resources together. Uh, otherwise, it's just too huge uh, and too demanding. So, um, so at some point in time, we'll, we'll all sit around the table and, uh, and decide on goals and decide on the task sharing, which is what we had to do for the ISS. There's already plenty of different countries working together, Europe, Canada, um, Jax, uh, sorry, Japan, Russia, and the U.S. working together for the United States. If you could add China, that would be great. That would be a great asset for everybody. So I hope we, we bridge the gap. Um, and that's, what, that's why ESA is, I think, well positioned. We're talking to our Chinese colleagues. We're hoping to create some kind of, of precedent. And then, and then we'll bring everybody around the same table like, like we know how to do in Europe. Um, so yes, it's difficult to work together. But, but that's the only way. That's how you achieve things. You, it doesn't make any sense to just, you know, say, oh, oh, yeah, I'm tired of this. I go back to my own single individual countries and the way things were before. It just doesn't work. It's an illusion. So people promoting this uh, never believe them. Um, question 12 from Victoria. According to your experience, what's the biggest difference between piloting a plane um, and a Soyuz? So, well, that's a good question. I think the, the biggest difference is... So, of course, the piloting is not exactly the same. It's not the same, well, it's the same laws of physics, but in a different environment. Um, with a spacecraft, you're on a ballistic trajectory, pretty much. Uh, with a plane, it's, it's different. It's an aerodynamic uh, trajectory. But uh, the biggest difference, I think, is when you're, when you're a pilot in your plane, um, you're the decision maker. When you work together with the, the, um, the ATC, the air traffic control, but they're not going to tell you what to do because they don't know. They're here to help, um, and and you're in charge of of the safety of the crew, of the safety of the pilots behind. So you're going to make lots and lots of decisions, reasonable decisions. But but still, uh, when you're flying a spacecraft, at least to so use um, the control center is is uh, more in charge of the of the vehicle than than you are pretty much. Uh, so if you want to take over manually, you're going to have you're going to have to ask. And I was shocked at the beginning, but that's the way at least it's done in Russia. And uh, if you want to take over manually, you'll need the control center to agree. Like, um, can I take over manually? Because I think I should. And I'll tell you yes, or I'll tell you no. And if they tell you no, then even though you might think you should, um, you're not supposed to do it. So, um, so that's, that's something I had to, to adapt. Uh, but in the end, I think it works really fine because they've been doing this for years and years and years and that's, and that's extremely safe, uh, which is good because we sit on these vehicles so we want them to be safe. Um, all right, that was it for the questions. I, I hope I replied to your questions. I, I hope there was not too, um, not too many digressions and things like that. Uh, but it was a pleasure to be virtually with you here today. Um, I have my, my old college engineering school in my heart and I'll, I'll keep it for a long long time so um, so hi to everybody down there um, I wish I, I could be with you physically but obviously I have something else to do right now and uh, and I'll come back hopefully after the mission and we'll uh, get the chance to spend some time together uh, but for now that's gonna be it I wish you a very very good space up event and uh, all the best from the International Space Station <laughs>